Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience. So sorry about the technical difficulties. It's like my router dropped the signal. And then because the router dropped the signal, it stopped doing the stream thing. Well, hi, everyone. I know it is not Thursday. Normally, I'm live every single Thursday. But this week, I got into a little bit of a uh, fender bender. Unfortunately, I was in a super minor car accident on Wednesday in the afternoon, um, driving my car. Fortunately, somebody didn't quite stop, and so they ended up colliding with my vehicle. I am a-okay, doing so much better, but decided to go ahead and take it easy yesterday. I woke up almost with like a, like a car accident hangover. Like I was like, oh, my back hurts. Oh, my head hurts. Oh, why does it feel like I'm actually dying? But so much better today. Yesterday, I did go to the ER. They took some pretty little x-rays. All looks well. Nothing is broken. Minor whiplash injury, maybe a minor concussion. So pretty much just take it easy for a few days. And so I postponed Coffee with Alice until today. So thank you all so much for joining me, even though this is not the normal time. So before we get started with today's show, I've got a couple announcements. Announcements, 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 yeah! So first off, we need to talk about something extremely, extremely important. Those of you that follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook may have already seen this, but I have started a new campaign called StopLockdown.org. Nye County Commissioners are attempting to change the brothel legislation once again to assume a draconian, abusive standpoint that would only allow sex workers in Nye County to leave once per every 10 days and only between the hours of 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. What the fuck? Okay? That's not okay that is outdated, that is abusive, and as such, I plan to go down to the commissioner's meeting in Pahrump, Nevada on October 15th and speak out against the situation. Unfortunately, it looks like some of the Nye County brothel owners may have actually colluded with the Nye County commissioners to help put this proposal forward. The reason why this is so sketchy is because we're right about to begin a two-year work study of the Nevada brothel industry and determine what the best legislation is moving forward as a state. It's almost like they're trying to preempt that study before it happens and try to push this forward and quite literally lock the girls down. As such, we really need your help and support to raise awareness that this is happening. The only way, the only way that we are going to be able to stop lockdown is with your help. Unfortunately, many Nye County sex workers are afraid to speak out against this because they work in Nye County and as such could be risking their positions. Personally, I am a sex worker at the world famous Moonlight Bunny Ranch, which is located in Lyon County. Lyon County is not a lockdown area. This is live from my house right now. We are free to come and go as we please and our testing is once per every seven days very reasonable. That's the way that things should be. In my opinion, Lyon County is going to end up serving as the model example for all the other counties of Nevada, and I do believe that this two-year work study is going to show that lockdown is not in the best interest of sex workers. As such, what I need you to all do is after the show, go to the website, and then click the link at the very bottom that links to the commissioner's information. It has their cell phone numbers. It has their email addresses. And what I'm looking for is for you to either type a letter or pick up the phone, give them a call, and let them know that this policy is abusive, outdated, and unacceptable. Seriously, as you all know, sex worker voices are very easy to ignore, but the voices of the general public, however, the, that gets listened to. So please, 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 please help out, help raise awareness. It's super important because we need to stop this kind of policy before it goes any further and literally kill it in its tracks. Also, 
one more final announcement. Bunny Ranch Podcast! It is a thing! If you have not already, go check it out on iTunes as well as Spotify. I am the host of the podcast. Each week it's a 30-minute episode of me interviewing one of my co-workers, discussing some really in-depth detail information about the industry. It tends to be a little bit more personal. We talk about ladies' personal preferences, ask some real hard questions, and really dive into things on that like intimate level there. So if you haven't already, please check it out. Leave a nice little five-star rating and a little, oh, this show's really freaking awesome and Alice is super cute. You know, all that good stuff. So this week, I wanted to dive into a very important topic. Sex etiquette. So many people have no idea how to have sex the right way. When we were all in school and getting sex education, they really never taught how to have quality sex, let alone how do you be polite to your partner during intimacy. So I decided to break things down into three different categories. Pre-sex, during sex, and post-sex. But I figure we should talk about before you begin what it is you're supposed to do in order to set yourself up for success in the bedroom. There's so many different components of intimacy and sex, but really getting that correct information started before sex actually starts is really important. You figure that before sex really establishes what it is your intimate encounter is going to look like. Whether that be at a brothel or during your own personal life, it's important and essential that you talk about what do you discuss before sex actually happens? So, the very first thing is, for the love of God, either hop through the shower or wash your hands. Did you know that there's this thing called germs and they're actually really bad? Germs, such as those on your hands, can actually cause yeast infections or UTIs for your partner. And as such, it's very important to be polite and make sure that you're clean and prepared for the sex act before it actually begins. Trust me, there is nothing that's more of a turn off than have somebody going to reach to touch your body and you can just like see the underneath their nails with the like, no, that is not. That's not what you want to have happen at all whatsoever. So please sing the happy birthday song, wash your hands with soap. Yes, use soap, damn it. Scrub underneath your nails if applicable. I would even go so far as to go ahead and get like a cute little manicure. Yes, manicures are for men too. If you go into the shop and let them know, hey, just want things filed down, maybe a little clear top coat, I'll tell you right now, the girls are gonna be like hella impressed that you actually took the time to prepare in that way. It's a simple little step that you can do to show consideration to your partner and let them know that you are invested in having a quality experience with them. The next thing that really needs to happen before sex is your consent conversation. Because if you don't know it's gonna happen, you can't really consent to it happening. As such, I recommend starting the conversation off with what kinds of things do you enjoy sexually? What kind of experience are you looking to have today? That's something that I often do with the ranch as part of the negotiation. I kind of hate to call it a negotiation because it's really more of a back and forth conversation where we're able to share what it is that we personally enjoy as well as things that we may not be into. For example, oh, my nipples are really sensitive. I love when they're touched and kissed and caressed, but please don't bite, that doesn't feel very good to me. For example, by asking open-ended questions such as, what kinds of sensations do you enjoy? You allow your partner to actually put language to that rather than just, yeah, do you like your hair pulled? Uh, no. Okay, do you like your balls touched? Uh, yeah you can get so much more out of the conversation by just simply asking those open-ended questions. It makes a tremendous difference. Luna, come here, Luna. Luna. Luna's trying to knock over the camera. Here, come here. As everyone knows, my cat's a terrorist. She does what she wants. It's actually her show. 
at least once a show, she tries to knock over the camera, jumps on me, jumps behind the countertop. I mean, she's kind of just a monster. Sweet girl. I love her so much, though. Aww. But yes, having that initial consent conversation is super important, especially if you're going to be engaging in any sort of BDSM type activities. During BDSM activities, you want to take it even one step further and ask specifics about what has your experience been like with this particular activity? Do you know what your limitations are? What are your preferred safe words? I will be going into BDSM consent in a future episode, so do stay tuned for that because BDSM, of course, is kind of its own separate thing and really does require a special conversation before it begins. So there's also another important C conversation you want to have other than consent, and that's contraception. Are we using condoms? Are we using a female condom? Is someone on birth control? Are we consensually agreeing to fluid exchange as a part of a bounded fluid relationship? It's so necessary and important to talk about those things before sex begins. This way you're not getting to the act and going, Hey, where's the condom? And everyone's like, oh God, there's no condom, oh shit. What do we do? Oh God, panic. Don't have that happen. Start the conversation off the right way. Hey, what's your preferred contraception method? In the world of legal sex work, condoms are required for any and all sexual activities, blowjobs included. There's multiple types of condoms in different shapes, sizes, materials. You can even go so far as to order bespoke condoms from a website called myonecondom.com. They have like 60 different sizes, so if you're a little bit extra girthy or lengthy, or alternatively, you wanna make sure that you've got something that fits 100% the right way, you can actually order those condoms in advance. And so long as it's a brand new unopened package, even bring it to your appointment at the ranch and we can use that as part of our encounter together. Having the right fit of condom makes a tremendous difference in terms of the quality of sex. The last thing you wanna have happen is like that red ring of death around the base of your penis, cause like, that really doesn't feel good. It restricts blood flow. It, it's, it's not really lovely at all. Most men who find that sex is uncomfortable with condoms find that because they're using the wrong type of condom, the wrong size of condom. As such, I really encourage people to go ahead, use that particular website, find something that's the right fit for you, and kind of go from there. Luna, why are you like this? My cat, she's too much. Another cool product on the market right now are female condoms. Female condoms, unfortunately, are not sold or distributed nearly as widely as standard condoms are. However, with advance notice, I can get them for our date. Female condoms are worn by the female partner internally, so this way it almost feels like you're not wearing anything at all. This is actually the safest way to have a sexual encounter with two or more ladies. This way you're not having to change the condom out every time. Every single lady simply has her own condom, so you can even participate in switching fantasies where you directly pull out of one person and then go right into the other person. You would not be able to do that with a traditional male condom because otherwise you're introducing fluid from one person to the other and that's not super safe. Another thing you really want to have a conversation about before you begin is status. Know your status. Please go get an STD and STI test. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's super quick, easy, and even free if you go to Planned Parenthood. There's no reason in 2019 to be afraid of going to the doctor, let alone knowing what your status is. Most STDs and STIs are extremely treatable, simply looks like taking a pill or a little shot, nothing to be afraid of. So please, 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 know your status, go to the doctor, go get an STD and STI test. As a legal sex worker, we are required by law to test every seven days. As such, when you know, as such, when you come to spend time with a legal sex worker, you know that everything is going to be safe. You don't have to worry about any sort of issues in that direction, which is a really positive thing. Another good thing to do is clean your goddamn sex toys beforehand. This 
is the Swiss Navy brand of toy cleaner. It's antibacterial, antimicrobial, antifungal, antiviral. This, it kills everything. It can be a real mood killer to be like, oh, hold on, I have to go wash my dildo. Let me be right back. Like, that's not really fun. So I always recommend cleaning toys before you begin. Additionally, it's really polite to show your partner, hey, look, I am cleaning everything. So this way we both have the foreknowledge that we are playing safe. Whenever I engage in any activity at the ranch that involves sex toys, I always make sure that everybody is participating in the sex toy cleaning process so we all get to visually verify that we're playing it safe. What's also cool about this stuff is that during threesomes, you can have it by the bed and if you go from touching one person to another person, pause, spray your hand, shake it off. Now you don't have to run to the restroom and go wash your hands real quick. You can just do this and it achieves pretty much the exact same thing, which is wonderful. Alrighty, also coffee break. Uh. All right, so I'm rocking this super awesome um, Halloween mug since it's October. Let me show you guys. It's Madame Leola from the Haunted Mansion at Disney because I'm a Disney princess at heart. I'm like the kinky Disney princess. I'm like the X-rated Disney princess that you don't really get to see in theaters. It's like direct to DVD Disney princess. You know, the hardcore Disney princess. I'm like kinky Cinderella. Yeah. Anyway, let's get into doing the deed. Having sex. What do you do to actually be polite during the act of intercourse? Well, it all starts by going slow, taking your time. Foreplay is probably the most essential thing to setting the tone for the rest of your sex experience. You figure foreplay should take between 15 and 20 minutes because it takes that long for the female arousal cycle to actually take place. One of the things to really be aware of during foreplay is that it's so much more than just getting the other person naked. It's taking your time, caressing, touching, kissing, slowly making your way across your partner's body. This gives you a chance to discover their erogenous zones, so this way you know where they like to be touched, as well as where they probably prefer not to touch. Additionally, while you're actually going through foreplay and having sex, you can have a conversation with the other person. Mmm, tell me how that feels for you. Do you enjoy that sensation? What does that feel like? By asking those open-ended type questions rather than, do you like that? 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 How does that feel? It allows them to put more language to it and be a little bit more descriptive. Ooh, when you grab my hair, it sends shivers up my spine and it makes my toes curl. Mm, it's so much more intense and a lot more connective and fun of an experience. Like, what do you think sounds hotter? Do you like that? Or, ooh, tell me how I'm making you feel. Like, I'm going, I'm going with option number two there because that's really freaking hot. The other thing you can do is an open-ended check-in with your partner. Mmm, how are you feeling? Are you having fun? Is this what you had in mind? Tell me a little bit about what you'd like to happen next. It gives your partner an opportunity to touch base with you during the act and let them know, Mmm, hey, I'd really love if you go down on me right now. That would be a huge turn on. Ooh, I'd love more eye contact. I want you to tell me what you want me to do to you next. That really elevates the experience and enhances things. Looks like we have a few good uh, con questions going on here. Can you, can foreplay start with the date itself? Oh, 100%, foreplay can begin way outside of the bedroom. I personally am very stimulated by quality conversation, getting to learn more about what some of these hobbies are, their interests, their life goals, aspirations, fears, desires. I find that to be really stimulating and almost a part of the foreplay conversation. Oh, thank you, Paul, you were so sweet, Yeah. Yes, I always try to put a lot of good information out there. You figure sex education in this country is kind of... 
So as such, I think that it very much so has become part of the job of being a sex worker is to help with the education. Because let's be honest, where the hell else are you going to get it in today's world? Another thing to be aware of while doing the deed is that sex doesn't end when you finish, my dudes. Let her finish too. Check in with her and be like, oh, wow, that felt so great. Have you had an orgasm or would you like another one? Check in with her, my dudes. Find out what you can do to make sure that she is having just as much fun as you are. You figure there's so many different ways to get ladies off beyond just penetrative sex. Fun fact, 80% of women cannot finish just from penetrative sex alone. They need a little bit of clitoral stimulation, a little bit of oral stimulation, maybe some nipple play. Find out by having that conversation with your partner before you actually stop having sex to make sure that she's not just gonna, you know, go home and go finish herself off afterwards. Like that's not, that's not fun. Be a considerate sex partner. Orgasms are for everyone. Yay, orgasms. Do you like orgasms? Cause I love orgasms. So make sure that everybody gets to have that as part of the sex experience. So, Moving right along into the post-orgasm phase, there's still a lot of things you can do to be a considerate partner even when sex is over. After you finish cleaning up all the stickiness and the condom and getting that stuff out of the way, cuddle, spend some time holding each other. Sex doesn't just end with the orgasm, psh, okay, now we part ways, bye. Taking the time to cuddle and talk about and reflect on the experience you just had can be really, really amazing and kind of really intimate too. I really like to ask my partners, what did they enjoy most? Like, mm, what felt really good for you? Did you enjoy the blow job? Was there a particular position that really got you going? What do you want more of the next time we get to play together? And the opposite of that is also finding out which things your partner would prefer not to do. You can do that by simply saying, hey, what would you change about the experience? This way they can say something like, oh, you know, I'd really love to take a little bit more time with foreplay. I was really enjoying you eating me out. If next time we could slow that down a little bit and, you know, spend a little bit more time. <laughs> yeah. You can have those conversations with your partner afterwards, and sometimes it'll even kind of lead into the next sexual experience. Some men are able to bounce back fairly quickly, go for round number two. So you can kind of use this post-orgasm opportunity to have that conversation with your partner and find out, what are we gonna change? How are we gonna spice it up? And then you get to begin all over again. Also, much like the same time that you go so far and like stop having sex, it can all, oh, Oliver, thank you. You guys are so freaking sweet. Oh my God. Yeah, y'all are awesome. But um, yeah, just like when you like start by cleaning your toys, that's right. You finish by cleaning your goddamn sex toys before and after sex, before and after. Spray your toys down, then spray your toys down again. Why? Because it's so important to maintain a hygienic space. I would even go so far as to take my bottle of lube and spray that down afterwards. I'll spray my side table down. I mean, like, just use this stuff like everywhere. It's just like, just spray it all around the room, spray your hands, spray the toys, spray anything that could have had any sort of fluid anything because safety and cleanliness. It's sexy, it's important, and it's a great way to be a polite sex partner and let your partner know that you value your health as well as their health. I probably go through like a dozen of these a month, like, not gonna lie, I've totally used this to clean my kitchen before, just saying it works really well, because it's body safe and it's non-toxic and I don't have to worry about it hurting my dogs, which is super great, because I have pets and like this is one of the best cleaners on the planet, in my opinion anyway. There's just so many little tiny things you can do to be a little bit more considerate of a partner for your partner. Sex etiquette is one of those things that I really wish they would talk about in sex ed to set everyone up for success. 
Unfortunately, most people's first sexual experience is that of like, I don't know, what do you do? I don't know, it's a condom. Uh, uh, is this the right way? I don't know, oh shit. Uh, panic! Instead of that, taking your time, having those conversations up front, it's really going to change the way that you engage in sex and it's going to really elevate your sexual experiences too. A lot of couples find that sex has gotten stagnant, it's stayed the same for far too long, they're not sure how to spice things up, they're not sure how to introduce this kind of communication and conversation into the act of intimacy. And that's one of the things that I oftentimes end up doing with my couples at the Bunny Ranch. We take the time to go through this and model that correct behavior. Hey, let's talk about what this is going to look like before we begin. Ooh, is there a certain color of lingerie you would like me to wear? What kinds of sensations are you wanting to experience today? Do we want to start off with a massage maybe? Or do we want to begin our adventure in a jacuzzi tub? Getting to see that happen in real life is so, so important because Hollywood doesn't show us that, porn doesn't show us that. Big shout out to Lisa Ling, my homegirl. She just did an awesome episode of This Is Life discussing porn and the potential dangers of porn when it comes to affecting our youth. Check that out if you have not had an opportunity to yet. It's absolutely bloody brilliant. I had the opportunity to meet Lisa Ling back when I first started at the ranch in 2015. She came out and had done an entire episode on legal sex work, which was just beautiful. Beautiful beyond words. Alrighty, let's get into some Q and A. Let's see, I'm gonna scroll back through here. Co name of the condom company. It is myonecondom.com. And if you have latex allergies, there is an amazing brand of condoms called Skin, spelled S-K-Y-N. They come in multiple sizes, multiple textures, and they are latex free for those that have allergies. When it comes to dental dams, most of the commercially produced ones are unfortunately made of latex. However, did you know you can actually use saran wrap in a pinch? It achieves the exact same thing and it's latex free. I've even heard of people using like sandwich baggies and like DIYing it, cutting the little top off, splitting the bag open, also works really well for oral sex protection. Because guess what? You do need to use protection when you're having oral sex too. Not a lot of people realize it, but that is a potential way to contract an STD or STI. And as such, please play it safe, don't be dumb, make good choices. It sets everyone up for success in that way. I soak all my toys in hot water, keep them clean and in good working order. Keep in mind that it can be very difficult to 100% sanitize toys with hot water. Additionally, not all toys are waterproof and water safe. Seriously, like get you some Swiss Navy toy cleaner. You really want to do that even if you're going to use hot water as well because you really want to kill everything. Everything. What else do we have in the q and I this year? Kitchen sex? Yeah, kitchen sex can be really, really hot. I, for one, have definitely had intimate encounters like on top of a table before, like on the kitchen counter. The Kit Kat Ranch actually has a beautiful setup that has like a little mini kitchenette in it. I had done a photo shoot there about a year ago. It was really kinky and fun. So long as we plan in advance, we can absolutely rent that space from the Kit Kat and go and have our adventure there instead. Say the guy goes limp after coming, but you haven't reached orgasm, would you enjoy a toy or manual stimulation? It really depends on the particular lady. For me, I'm very, very sensitive. Oftentimes I find that like direct touch is a little bit too, too much, especially after being so turned on during sex. Instead, I tend to personally finish best either using a sex toy or oral sex, or it can even be really sexy and fun to let me show you what I enjoy and kind of like get myself off and tease that way. Of course, every single body is different and as such, you want to have that as an open-ended conversation. 
how would you like me to help you finish? Would you prefer to finish yourself? What do you want this experience to look like? Again, it creates options for your partner and allows them to put language to what their desires actually are in that moment. See what else we have here. What is my kink? Oh my God, I have so many different kinks. Um, kinks shouldn't be stigmatized in any way, shape, or form. I think it's super important that we embrace all forms of kink. This way, everyone feels like they have a safe place to explore. Oh my gosh, KP, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you love all that I'm doing. Really appreciate it. Like, again, I find that the education side of things is just as important as the sexy side of things. Because why not both? Let's see, would I ever work with Dolly Little? Well, personally, I'm not a porn performer, and from my understanding, Dolly Little, the, the porn performer, has actually since retired. I'm not sure what kind of content she's creating these days, but I'm a huge supporter of her work and what she does. She's adorable beyond all belief, and she is also another very well-spoken sex worker who strongly advocates for consent and communication. What else do we have here? Yes, protection while having oral sex. So, so, so important. And yes, obviously, Kieran, at the Bunny Ranch, condoms are required for any and all sex acts, including blowjobs. Again, it's safety. It would be a really tremendous risk to both myself as well as you if we weren't using protection. And as such, it is required literally by law. If you've never been to the Bunny Ranch property, there's actually a little like cute sign up front that says like condoms are mandatory. Low key, I've kind of asked them to be like, can I just like take this sign and hang it on my bedroom wall? Cause I think it's super funny. Like it's so damn cute. I love all the ridiculous signs we have. There's so, so many. Has the Me Too movement had an effect on sex etiquette? RDKZ, I absolutely do believe so because the Me Too movement has really changed the way in how we communicate. Consent has kind of been brought to this new national level of awareness. Well, previously in the 90s, we really didn't talk about things like consent. Like if we look at the Monica Lewinsky, Bill Clinton situation, at no point in time did anybody ask, hey, was this a consensual sex act? We never even questioned the fact that she may have been pressured, coerced, forced. We didn't even think to ask those questions at that time. Whereas in today's day and age, we actually do have those conversations. We ask those questions. And as such, it's really raising public awareness in terms of how do we talk about sex acts and what kinds of language we are using. Personally, I practice something called enthusiastic consent, which means that the person must be willing and actively agreeing, enthusiastic about their consent. Essentially, you want to hear someone going, oh yeah, I definitely wanna have sex with you. A big red flag is if somebody is saying, I don't know, I mean, I'm not really sure, I mean, I guess. Is that really enthusiastic consent? Is that person really wanting to do that? Or did you potentially pressure them into that situation? Instead, by using open-ended language, you create space for everyone to actually have their needs, wants, and desires met in a way that feels good for both parties too. Let's see what else is going on here. Do female condoms feel the same as male condoms? There is a difference between male condoms and female condoms. A lot of men report that female condoms almost feel like getting to have um, bareback sex where they don't really notice the condom as much. This is particularly beneficial for gentlemen that are of a larger size or of a smaller size in which the condom is going to impede their situation. Additionally, gentlemen that are circumcised oftentimes struggle with getting enough sensation and friction and have a tendency to kind of go a little bit harder, rub a little bit more, whereas using a female condom during intercourse can actually increase sensitivity and sensation for them too, since you figure the female partner is the one who has the condom inside. 
Yes, I know. I thought it really weird that nobody questioned Bill Clinton either. I mean, I really wish that we would have had that conversation years and years and years ago. Unfortunately, that never quite happened. However, I'm really glad to see that Me Too has kind of taken on this national level of awareness, if not even an international level of awareness, too. What off? What else do we have here? What's your thoughts on porn and how it affects people's lives? I actually did an entire video on that, Adam. If you go back through my channel, there's a whole little episode I had done that talks about pornography as well as my thoughts on pornography. Check that out. It goes into a lot of the nuanced details about who, what, why, how, all that good stuff there. Let's see. What else? What proportion of your male clients? enjoy receiving a bit of anal play. You know, Tommy, it is the number one most requested fantasy of men is anal play type experiences. Most interestingly enough, the pegging section of my website, thealicelittle.com, is the most popular part of my website. Unfortunately, we stigmatize those types of activities so much so that men feel as if they're unable to put language to that desire and as such really don't get that experience outside of the legal brothel space. It's one of the reasons why I like to talk about it and destigmatize it because it is normal. Guys, you have a prostate. It's located up your butt. When you stimulate it, it actually feels really good and pleasurable. And if you've never explored in that way, feel free to reach out to me, alicelittle at bunnyranch.com. I'd be more than happy to walk you through all the beginner basics, all the way up to more advanced pegging type activities. Let's see, what else? Yes, seduction under authority in regards to the Lewinsky situation. Yes, oh my God, that's totally what happened. I agree wholeheartedly. That was kind of insane. I mean, you figure it was a potential abuse of power there. You know, she could lose her job if she didn't say yes. You don't really know what that power dynamic was. And unfortunately, we never really created the space to have a conversation around, was this consensual? We just kind of made some really gross assumptions. Let's see, can I make a video at the Bunny Ranch? John, there's actually a whole series I have, again, on my YouTube channel. The little playlist is called Bunny Ranch. Everything from behind the scenes videos of me and my coworkers on photo shoots to an entire video tour of the ranch itself. So definitely check that out to get an idea of what the ranch space kind of looks like there. Do I consider prostate stimulation to be pegging? I think those are kind of different activities because prostate stimulation can be done with fingers, it can be done with toys, whereas pegging generally refers to the act of one partner wearing a strap on and actually going at full scale penetrative style sex. Whereas prostate stimulation, prostate massage, and prostate milking are alternative type prostate activities. I do recommend starting there and slowly working your way up to pegging. I'll be more than happy to kind of guide you along that way. I'm very, very health and safety aware, so we're not going to push your body too fast, too hard, or too far that it's going to risk anything. You really want to enjoy those types of activities with an experienced partner to make sure that you're doing them in a way that is safe, sane, and lots of fun too. Alrighty. Last couple moments here, guess. Cuddling is so important. It kind of allows for a cool down space after sex. I find that it's really, really nice and it lends itself so much so to having a better quality sexual interaction. Alrighty. Um, Oh gosh, there's a really great question, John. Can a client make a sex videotape with a sex worker? Yes, you absolutely can. Please let me know in advance if that's something you're interested in. I obviously have videos, cameras, lights, and one of my coworkers is actually a porn star who also edits all of her own content. So if you're interested in enhancing the experience and having like a naked videographer there, Kimberly Kane is phenomenal. She'll be able to participate and like literally edit together like a professional looking porn video for you. Do keep in mind that those videos are for personal use only. Don't put them on Pornhub, RedTube, or the internet. That wouldn't be nice for either of us. So they are for personal use only. And I do ask that my guests agree to that before any sort of photos or videos do occur. Alrighty, you guys, that's all I have for this 
week. Next week, I'm going to be diving into sex vacations. I mean, you may think that it's fun to come out to visit the ranch as a standalone encounter, but I'll tell you right now, a sex vacation has the ability to raise things to a whole other level. Oh, Oliver, again, thank you so much. And Adam, favorite mug? Um, that's a good question. I'll get back to you on that. I'll probably just make like a mug collection video so, so I can like actually go through them all and figure out like, oh my God, which, which thing am I doing? And yes, as a reminder again, check out that website. It's super important, stoplockdown.org. We really, 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 let me stress it again, really, really, really need your support if we are going to defeat lockdown. So please lend us a hand, make a phone call and send an email. As always, if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, give it a little thumbs up, make sure to subscribe to my channel, as well as turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the videos or me going live. Normally, I go live Thursdays, 10.30 a.m. PST, but we kind of joined at a new time this week because, you know, car accidents suck. All right, you guys, you can also keep up with me on social. I'm at the Alice Little on Twitter or at the Alice Little Official on Instagram. I post pictures, all sorts of information, lots of great content there. And I also do have a Facebook friend page where you can add me as well as a like page too. I even have a little group called Improving Intimacy, Communication and Connection with Alice Little. Feel free to join that group. It is closed, so you'll be asked to answer a couple questions before joining in, but it's a great way to learn more about sex in a safe space with other people that are also interested in education. All right, everyone, I'm out of here. I'll see you all next week. Bye.